All right, everybody, welcome to another pickups video. A lot of stuff here. Um, been wanting to show this stuff off for a while, and I'm finally able to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, got a couple of uh, different things in here. Um, I actually recently got um, sliders, um, the uh, complete series on DVD. Now I'm a big sliders fan. I even love the fourth and fifth seasons. People, a lot of people were kind of skeptical about those seasons, but I thought they were good. Um, it's just one of my favorite series. I can always watch this and not be bored with it. You know, it's just that good. Uh, a show that was ahead of its time, I would say, and um, still lives on to this day. They're trying to reboot it with the same characters, but man, they're just getting older and it just wouldn't be the same. You know how companies take a long time to do that type of stuff? You know, it's kind of like, it's yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work, but even if it, if it doesn't, we still got the classics. So if you haven't seen the Slider series, definitely a must see. All right, next up, we got uh, 13 Sentinels, uh, Aegis Rim for, for the PS4. Um, this one is, um, I've been waiting on this one for a while. I'm a big fan of Vanillaware, and uh, you guys know their art style is pretty outstanding. Uh, I would say uh, Dragon's Crown was a little bit weird with the Amazon and, and, and the Sorceress, but to each their own. Um, this game pretty much uh, takes place over a period of three period time periods. There's the past, present, and future. And I think I believe most of the time we're gonna be uh, I, I, the present in this game is considered like in the 80s, so you'll be mostly in that timeline, I think. I haven't got all the way through it yet, but the story comes together um, as you play the game. So it doesn't play all in order, but it's, it, it's kind of, what I will say, fragmented, but still, it'll all come together at the end. At least I hope it will. It seems like it will. Um, but <clears throat> basically, it's more, I would say, more of a, um, I don't want to really say visual novel, but because there are battles in it, but the battles are just uh, tactical RPG battles. So. They seem very simple um, from so far, but anybody who's gotten farther than me, let me know if it gets a li little bit more in depth. But um, the game is, seems pretty cool so far, you know. Uh, robots uh, coming to the city, at least what I saw so far. I don't know the whole story yet, but I'm interested in playing it. So check that one out. Next up we have here, I got this at Goodwill. Um, and this was more of a novelty, I would say. Um, this is um, Dreamfall, The Longest Journey, which is the second game in the series, uh, this is the PC version, of course. And um, I saw this for $3, I think it was, and I said, hey, I gotta get it, man. I like the big box stuff, and uh, these games, this stuff came with a lot of cool stuff in it. You know, I love the, 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 the flap and everything that shows more art in the game and more instruction and everything like that. But if you haven't played this game, it's more of like what you would call a, an adventure game. Well, well, you, you kind of call it like a point and And these type of games are really like uh, out there. You know, I played the first Longest Journey back in the day, and I, I found that game by chance. I remember uh, my boss at GameStop, he was like, Reggie, you gotta try this game, this is a good game. I said, what is this, PC? I don't play PC games. And he handed me the Longest Journey, and it was like $5, and I said, all right, this is when GameStop was still selling PC games. So I bought it, took it home, put it in my, in my PC, and I was blown away. So much dialogue, great story, so definitely I wanted to pick up the sequel and everything like that, so. Um, it's, I could tell you, I could talk about this game all day, but just Dreamfall. Let me talk about it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Next up we have here is Gun Showdown for the PSP. Now, Gun Showdown is pretty much uh, the gun game for PS2, Xbox, and GameCube, and even PC and 360. Jeez. Um, but they added on, a lot of people complained about the game saying that it, it was only... It was kind of too short, you know, and, and they're kind of right because there's only two main cities that I remember in this game. There was Dodge, I think another one was called Empire, maybe I'm wrong about that, but there was it was a pretty much a sandbox uh, Western game, but it was kind of empty. So they wanted to add some more story into it with some missions to kind of make the game stand out a little bit more in this version, but I mean, they, they seem tacked on, and that's fine, I guess, or whatever like that, but I still think Gun is a good game. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, my only complaint about this game, to be honest with you, was I guess I would say is the um, the ending seemed like it was like it should have been a little bit longer, but it, it, it's still an outstanding game. And I was surprised I didn't own this on the uh, PSP. I thought I already owned it, and then I luckily I looked it up. I looked it up, and I was like, wait a minute, do I have this game? And I looked at my uh, my inventory, and I said, oh my god, I don't have it. I thought I did. So, Gun Showdown for the PSP uh, worth getting. All right, so next. So this game uh, got English translated for the Dreamcast, uh, I think around two years ago. And this is a survival horror game. This is Seven Mansions um, for the Dreamcast. 
I always wanted to try this game out, and I used to have the original copy uh, back in the day. This is actually a reproduction copy in, in, in English. Um, I this game was like, um, I, I always wanted to try it out because I love survival horror games. And there's a lot of hidden survival horror games out there that we don't know about, but they're not they're not translated, so they get overlooked. And luckily, someone found this one and decided to translate it in English. So I'm very excited to play this one. Uh, Kyle, shout out to you, man, for hooking this up, man. I appreciate you, bro. Um, yeah, I can't wait to play this one. But uh, survival horror, old school survival horror, right up my alley. Uh, definitely something uh, I want to get into. Translates to, I believe. So it's called Seven Mansions. <laughs> uh, next up here, Kyle hooked up uh, Resident Evil 1.5. So this is an updated version of the 1.5. This is the this is the original Resident Evil 2, pretty much. They found a 40% build of it. Um, there's a there's a, a allegedly 80% build out there that somebody's hiding and keeping in a safe somewhere, knuckleheads. But um, because the game was almost finished, I believe it was close to being finished before they canceled it. But um, they got the 40% build, and they've been trying to kind of build up from that version of the game, and they've been doing a good job. Uh, unfortunately, it's taken years uh, for them to do it because um, people will probably have other stuff to do besides work on this game. So around, around I believe it was leaked around 2013, uh, and the build got put out, and they were slowly kind of building on the game and everything like that. So it's actually it actually feels pretty good so far, man. This one, this one. Is actually definitely playable. Uh, the other version I played before, man, was like it was a mess. I mean, the characters getting stuck on the ceiling and all kind of. It was like, wow, dude, this is insane. But um, uh, hopefully they'll finish this project up because this is. I think they have something really good in mind. Um, they're usually going off stuff from the PlayStation Museum back in the day, how they showed the old footage of the game. So they're going off that and putting the police department together in certain areas together. So it really, I think they're really doing a good job. But anyways. Resident Evil 1.5, this is um, obviously a burnt version of the game that you can play on uh, modded consoles. Alright, Rampage World Tour. Um, I got this game, well, not World Tour, Universal Tour, the second game, sorry. Um, I picked this game up uh, at my local uh, game store, um, and um, it was on the cheap too. So I think it was on 10 bucks. I didn't have this one, and I like the Rampage games. I felt like they were pretty cool games. Um, but I never played this one, so I was always like curious about this one. So found it for cheap, and I said, "Hey, why not pick this up?" Now, if you haven't played the Rampage games, they're pretty much you play at these 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 monsters, and you you're tearing these buildings up, going against the government, just going through level by level. This one adds a story mode in in it where uh, you're trying to I believe you're trying to rescue the original characters from the first game, and or whatever reason or something like that. Well, you play as new characters in this one, but um, um, yeah, there's not really much. To go off a of rampage. I mean, you go, you can look at the movies and maybe get an idea. One movie, there's not an idea of it, I guess. I never seen a rampage movie though, but um, I thought it was a pretty cool game to pick up. All right, Tunnel B1. Um, man, this this game, this game is all right, man. But the controls are floaty as hell. I'm like, geez, man, what's going on here? So I felt like it was like um. It's definitely an early PlayStation game. Well, not really early PlayStation, but at least the, the, the first or second year the PlayStation came out. And um, I liked it, but it's, I, I, for some in this game, I want to go. I want to. I feel like it's a driving game. I want to keep going fast or whatever like that. But in this game, you got to stop in certain areas, fight enemies, hit these switches, and and move on and drive on. And it's just like, damn, there's too much stop and go in this game. So it's not like you're just going through this tunnel all fast and shooting enemies or anything like that. It's just like stop and go gameplay. And I thought that was kind of annoying, but um. You gotta admit the cover is is definitely retro, man. That, that cover is insane. But anyways, Tunnel B1, uh, something you guys might want to check out. I'm not sure. And uh, here is NBA Fast Break uh, 98 uh, for the PlayStation. This one I picked up because I'm trying to like collect some of the basketball games from the early like well mid uh, the late 90s. You know, um, those games feel feel like more arcadey like, and this one definitely does too. Um, it's funny because they have the Bulls and Utah Jazz on the cover because they were in the NBA Finals, but there's no Jordan in sight, dude, on this picture. And um, I guess Jordan's licensing was pretty expensive because, like, when you look at his character in the game, uh, all it says that his, his his number is 98 in the game, and it doesn't have he doesn't have a name or anything. His stats are there, but it's like just it just says 98. So I'm like, wow, dude. So that's that's pretty insane. So. Anyways, Fast Break 98, simplistic, well, not, I don't want to say simplistic basketball, it's like more arcade basketball type. Alright, so I'm going to move some games over here. Alright, I think I'll reach some more here. Hope. Alright, here we go. 
So um, here is oops, PGA PGA uh, Tour 96. Um, this pretty much I got this game because um, it was it was on the cheap, man. I said, hey, why not check this out? Maybe I like this golf game. It was on the cheap. I picked it up for like I think it was like five bucks or something like that. So um, yeah, man. I, I mean, if it, if it comes to golf games, I like Mario Golf. That's probably the only golf games I'll usually play. But I, I wanted to give this one a try, especially it being a long box. So that's all I can really say. <laughs> all right. So um, next game here, Recore for the PC. Pick this up. More of a novelty. This was five dollars. I love the cover, and I'm really liking the, the Recore game so far. So um, I really feel like Recore is kind of like what um. Mega Man Legends 3 would have been if it if it was had a serious budget, like a triple A budget pretty much, you know. Um, I know the original game was supposed to be on the 3DS, but it got canceled because KJ Fune decided to leave Capcom before finishing it. But um, man, he should have finished that game, man. Shouldn't have left. But anyways, um, Recore for the uh, Xbox One. Oh, PC, duh. Um, you could get this version for um, probably five to ten dollars cheap. Internet uh, connection required, so there you go. All right, Defcon 5 for the PS1. Um, I always I wanted to buy this game a long time ago, and I totally forgot about it. I found it for 10 bucks online, and um, it pretty much your is a game where you put you, it has FMV scenes on it, which already like took me away with the game. But you you end up being on the space station. It seems like you're on the space station by yourself, and you're kind of defending from enemy intruders, which is pretty insane. So you have to go to like certain areas, make sure they're clear and everything like that. Make sure you're not getting attacked outside. If you're someone's coming, you can shoot missiles at them and stuff like that. It's pretty. It could be pretty eerie in a way. Like you, you feel like you're in this world and you're all alone, and you know no one's around. You're the only one like fighting. It's pretty insane. But um, this is definitely something that you would play on like probably like DOS back in the day. But um, this is a cool game, guys. I would say definitely check it out if you like the footage you're seeing here. Um, yeah, Def Com, and it was, I think it was, it was published by Data East. I don't know if they created it. Um, yeah, it looks like they might have created this game. They might Maybe they were trying something different with the game. But um, anyways, guys, uh, check this one out. All right. Um, next up here, Battlefield 4 for the PS3. I picked this up because, um, uh, as you guys know, in the past pickups videos, I picked up a Battlefield 3 for 99 cents, and I, I really liked it. Um, I like these games more for their story modes. I feel like Battlefield is more closer to what uh, certain stuff would, that would happen in the real wars and stuff like in real time situations like that. Uh, Modern Warfare is is a little bit out there with their story modes, but uh, they, they, I mean, like like I said, it's, it's, it is a video game, it's action, but I feel like this is more like um, what I would say realism in a way. Uh, but I could. I, that, that, take that with a grain of salt. But anyways, um, I I play these games for the story mode. I like the story mode so far in this one. I haven't got that far. Um, I know people say it's short or whatnot, but um, you know, I don't know. I just like playing these games for that for the story mode. I think Dice does a good job on these first person battlefield games. So um, um, and the online community is still very active for this. So um, that's pretty cool to see that on the PS3 because you guys know PSN on the PS3 still free. So you can play games online for free. But anyways, Battlefield 4, check it out. Um, Kill Switch um, for the PS2. Um, I always, I remember when this game first came out, and I always wanted to play it, but I never did. I think I played a demo of it, and then I just never got back into it. But I saw it for cheap, and I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a chance again. Now when I played it again, I remember why I didn't really pay too much attention to it, because you got to get used to the controls. The controls are really different. It's a cover and fire game, pretty much. Um, but it's, it's actually pretty good. You just got to get used to the controls. Once you get used to the controls, I think the game will, I don't know if it'll, t I won't say it'll take off or anything, anything like that, but it's still very interesting to where, um, if you like the cover, cover fire system, if you like a game that's really focused on that, you'll like this game. Um, but, um, yeah, kill, kill switch for the, uh, PS2. Uh, next up we have Aragon. Uh, I remember when this uh, movie came out and, um, I never played the game, but um, the reason for why I just didn't like playing games that were based off movie licenses uh, back then, but um, I but I did play Lord of the Rings games and loved those on the uh, PS2. Um, but this one, I felt like um, it was like it's gonna be lame. But then I found out the same creators that made um, Forgotten Realms, if you guys remember that game on the PS2, uh, Dungeons and Dragons game, those those guys made this game as well. So I picked it up and I wasn't disappointed. They did a good job on this one too. 
Um, very cinematic game. Um, I haven't seen the movie, so I can't tell you too much about the movie, but um, the way they did this game was actually very interesting, so I really enjoyed it. Um, well, I'm enjoying it so far. So if you play Aragon, uh, let me know what you guys think about this game in the comments. I was gifted this uh, months ago by, by my buddy Kyle, and this this damn thing saved saved me because um, this he got me this around January this year, and um, this was funny because uh, I was actually watching uh, oh this is Battlefield I mean Battlestar Galactica I was about to say Battlefield again Battlestar Galactica uh, the complete Blu-ray uh, set now what happened with this I took a gamble on watching the series so I, I it was on Amazon Prime last year. And I was like, wow, this is great, dude. So I was like, just watching it all the time and everything like that. And then I left to go visit family during Christmas. And I came back. And I said, you know what, man? I'm, I'm bored, man. Let me watch some uh, Battle of Star Galactica. And Amazon Prime took it down with no explanation, no warning saying it was leaving or anything like that. So I was hella bummed out. I was like, dude, man, I, wanna, I just want to watch Battle Star Galactica, dude. So Kyle, thanks for hooking us up. If you haven't seen the series, guys, it is a fantastic series. Um, I think it's better than the original. I, I, I watched some of the original back in the day. That seems the original seems kind of like um, silly now, but this one just seems more like dark and like more serious. That's why I like this one. Um, had a great time watching this one. And um, these uh, this is the PAL uh, version of the blue uh, Blu-ray set, uh, but it's not uh, region locked. So just for you, so you guys will know, it's not region locked at all. But um, yeah, man. I mean, I don't I don't think this uh, a box set's been released in America. On, on blu-ray so Kyle thanks again buddy you saved me on this one all right so next up we have some 360 games here this is infinite undiscovery for the 360 I played this back in the day and um, I did I didn't really I don't I didn't really I wasn't really interested because I think I was just kind of mad it wasn't on the ps3 because it was weird playing an RPG on another system for me at least that wasn't PlayStation but um this game feels like um, it was made by definitely made by Enix on the Enix side of Square. Um, you could tell they were trying to something new and everything like that. And it feels like they used this same battle system for the last Star Ocean game, uh, Integrity and Faithlessness, I think it was called. But um, I can't really say much about it. I'm not that far in it. But I wanted to, I wanted to give it another go because um, you can play it on Xbox on the Xbox One, so it's backwards compatible, which is cool. So I'll definitely be playing on something like that. But uh, I don't know. It was on the cheap, so I picked it picked it up. So let me know what you guys think of this one. I hear it starts off a little slow, but it gets good later in the game. All right, so these next two games here. I love these games. I got to show you a clip from this one too. Um, this is Silent Scope Part One and Three, and um, I, I didn't. I couldn't find Part Two. Not that it's hard to find. Just nobody had it, so I'm, I'm still gonna get Part Two. But I didn't think much of the Silent Scope games. Um, back in the day even in the arcades I thought they were kind of like eh whatever but um the Dreamcast one you can actually play with the mouse which is cool uh, these ones you play with just a regular controller I believe you can't use any gun or anything like that to go with it but um the third game really made me laugh because there's a there's 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 a certain EX mode you play in the game where you have your your female partner with you and she kind of tells you where the targets are and like um man when she like when you hit a certain target or whatever like that if you finish the level properly the way she greets you is hilarious, man. It's, it's awesome. I'm going to show you guys the clip. He's taken hostages. Bring him down with one shot. Now, shoot. You're the greatest. You're the greatest. You're the greatest. All right, so... Here is uh, 99 Vitas uh, for the Switch. Um, this is a beat 'em up game similar to what you a game like uh, what's popular again right now, Scott Pilgrim. And um, you could tell it, the, the guys who created this game were fans of games like Streets of Rage. Um, there's any kind of beat 'em up game out there because it has like a bunch of novelties to those games in here just by the gameplay and certain like uh, sounds and the way bosses are. Um, but the Switch version is the definitive version because they added all the, they added two extra levels to the story. They added like a remix mode to the game where you could play as the extra levels they added onto the game. Um, so that's pretty cool. They even have a level called the First of Us, kind of related to the Last of Us in a way, and it's it's hilarious how they did it. But um, yeah, um, it's a very cool beat 'em up. Not many people know about it, unfortunately. Uh, there's there's copies being sold on eBay right now for I think. Or, well, I don't. I don't want to say cheap price because it depends on what you think is cheap. 
But um, no one's buying them because I don't think they know what it is, unfortunately. So, anyways, 99 Vitas, um, I'm telling you, you should check this one out, especially if you like Scott Pilgrim. Uh, next up, Bubble Bobble um, for Friends. Uh, this is a another Bubble Bobble game that's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of it's different because it kind of shows like um, what you would call if um, what's the word I want to look for for this game when it kind of describe it. You know, it plays like a regular Bubble Bobble game, but basically Bubble Bobble comes out of the game pretty much, and you're like in your in, the, in some kid's bedroom, like kind of climbing the levels and everything like that. It's pretty cool. Like they they jump beyond the fourth wall. That's what I was looking at for. Um, Four. Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> uh, I think this is a cool game. Um, uh, this is a strictly limited copy of the game, but they are selling copies in America uh, on Amazon. I think Amazon got exclusive rights to sell it in America because I don't really see it being sold in stores, but um, I've seen it for sale on Amazon. So, Bubble Bobble for friends. Check this one out. If you like Bubble Bobble games, they're all pretty much the same. There's no really change in the gameplay mechanics in the games. They all pretty much just stay the same. Just hopefully... When you get to the end of the game, you want to have a friend with you because that was annoying in the first one when you couldn't beat the first game because you had to have two players to beat the game. When I found out, I was so disappointed. I couldn't believe that, dude. Oh, I was mad. But I did find a way to get that second controller, get the second player there, and, you know, yeah, we were good. All right, so next one, next game here, a shoot 'em up game. This is Viseria uh, for the PS4, Switch, and the Vita. Um, this game came out years ago, and they just uh, finally just got it published on a, on, on a console. This version collection comes with an extra game, though. They made a newer version. It's actually a four-player game. So, And I think the four-player version is pretty cool. It may move a little bit slow uh, compared to the other two games, but it's still it's a cool add-on. So basically, you're getting three games in these collections. So you get the first two Viseria games, and um, Vasara games, excuse me. And then you get the third game, which is kind of like a like a newer newer game and everything, four player game. So that's pretty cool. Um, so you like what you're seeing here? Check these ones out. Um, ne next we have Necrosphere uh, for the um, PS4 and the Vita. This game is is a trip because it's it's a game that you really gotta you gotta be really good at platform games to be to play this game. It'll test your skills and it has a story mode up to it and everything. A guy gets killed and he gets put put in the necrosphere so i believe there's like like a like a, a portal of hell or whatever like that so he's trying to get out of it and everything so if you get out of it you get your life back again um but um i won't tell you the ending in the game or anything like that but it's actually pretty cool and i like the music in the game kind of keeps you going um but it's tough i'm just gonna tell you guys that it's pretty tough man so just bring your skills with you oh man bud spencer terrence hill Slaps and Beans, uh, beat them up for PS4 and the Switch. Um, this game is a lot of fun and it's hilarious because I watched a lot of spaghetti westerns. I still do. And um, Terrence Hill, man, oh my god, these guys are so damn funny, man. Uh, Bud Spencer, uh, they're more of what you would call the spaghetti westerns, where they're kind of they're kind of silly and everything like that. Not too serious, like uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly and stuff like that, or the Clint Eastwood or the Man with No Name trilogy, I would say. Um, but these things are these 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 their movies are awesome this game is hilarious um if you have a chance to pick this one up you definitely should it's a good beat em up lots of story driven in with it and everything like that so and the story kind of like really picks up the humor that they both had the chemistry they had together on camera so um definitely feels like something really good here something special so definitely check these ones out uh and next up we have ultra core as you guys know ultra core was a um unreleased uh, Sega Genesis game that got uh, finally got a, a release now. Uh, the Sega Genesis cart here is pretty much um, I don't want to say it's a Metroidvania type game, but it's an adventure game where you kind of like just like, kind of plays like if you guys remember games like a uh, Tyrigan, uh, it's very similar to that I would say. So if, you're, if you like Tyrigan, you definitely like this game. Um, they made it widely available for the Switch, now also on PS4. The Genesis copy is insane. They, they actually put this one out. I'm happy they put this one out, but uh. Yeah, I'm telling you guys, you guys should definitely pick this one up. It, the original name for it, I think it was called a Mega Core or something like that, or but they changed the name to Ultra Core. But I could be wrong about the original name. You guys, let me know. But if anybody's played this, let me know what you guys think of it. All right, we're knocking it out here. So you guys knew I got this. You saw my video on this one, uh, Super Mario 3D All Stars. I picked this one up. Um, it was hilarious because everybody said you got a pre-order it's going to be sold out and everything like that 
I'm not pre-ordering no Mario game, dude. It's not going to be sold out. So, I walked into the GameStop randomly. Hey, do you have the game? And they said, yes, we have it. Boom. Just bought it like that. Allegedly, um, what's going to happen? Nintendo said they're only going to like produce this game for six months. And then they're going to stop making them or whatever like that. So, people are, are waiting for that timeline. So, they're going like, to resell it, I guess, or whatever like that. But, still, a lot of companies don't even go that far. Like, selling, like, like like making games for six up to six months. And they, they stopped before that. So... This game's gonna, basically what I'm trying to say, this game's gonna look gonna be easy to find. And going into the game, uh, I think it's good emulation. It, I think they did a good job on it. I, I didn't see anything, I mean, everything loaded fast, so the, which made me happy. I went, I went straight to Mario Galaxy, which is the one I did, hadn't really played. And then Mario Sunshine is another one on here that's, that's good to have because the, you know, the GameCube version is going for a lot of money. Mario 64, it feels like I've seen it on everything. 64, uh, DS system, I just never really got into that one. But I think this is a good compilation of games. A lot of people ask why they didn't put Galaxy 2 on here. I think they didn't put Galaxy 2 on here because they're going to add it with another compilation. So that's that's pretty much why. But anyways, check this one out. I know you guys like this one. All right. And next one here is Grateful, Graceful Explosion Machine. Uh, this is a, a game that kind of reminds me of a, um, a Defender type game. Uh, shoot em up, I guess, where you can go back and forth. Uh, still getting used to this one, but it's pretty cool, actually. Um... I'm not really like uh, like into the like uh, like like the way you get weapons in this game. Like I want to have an arsenal of weapons ready to go, where I can switch to them. But this one, you pick up certain weapons that kind of help you out of your situation. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, Cairo Blaster uh, for the Switch, dude. This game is actually freaking cool, man. I was surprised by this one. I didn't think this one was gonna catch me, and I started playing it. And the way you get new, you level up in this game. You get you upgrade your weapons and stuff like that. Your your life bar and everything like that. It's actually really fun. So, um, not really much to say about Cairo Blaster. Uh, it de it's definitely addicting. Uh, I, got, I got somewhat far in it before I put it down. But the game is pretty, it just very pixelated. I mean, it's like, well, should I say pixelated? It's more of a, um, what's the word I want to use for this one? Uh, yeah, pixelated. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, Cairo Blaster for the Switch. And uh, here is It'll Do uh, for the Switch. I, I actually got It'll Do Part 2, and I thought that one was um, a mixture of the first game and the second game. Because I thought the first game, they were just all in one. I didn't know uh, there was a, like a first game by itself, kind of, in a way. Or I guess I did, but I just, like I said, I thought it was included with that. Um, this one is like what, a Zelda game, pretty much, I would say. So if you like the Legend of Zelda games, you'll like this one. Puzzle, action, um, top-down, uh, pretty cool game. Um, uh, people complained that it was hard, but I, I felt like it was just like a, maybe as hard as a Zelda game if you consider those hard. So, um, pretty cool stuff here. Um, so, it'll do. And now we're winding down. Yes. So, a movie uh, that I recommend every, every watch that nobody knows exists. They forgot about this movie or just don't, never seen it. Dwayne The Rock Johnson uh, did this movie. It's probably one of my favorite movies he's done. Uh, but um, this is a summer action movie. This is called Faster. I picked this one up. If you haven't seen Faster, you got to pick this one up, man. Faster was a pretty awesome movie. Billy Bob Thornton's in this one. Uh, the game has a lot of twists and turns. Um, very good. Very interesting movie, I would say, that people should check out. So, Faster. Uh, check that one out. And I also found one of my favorite movies on DVD, which I used to own years ago. But, uh, Willow uh, on DVD. Um Man, I remember seeing this movie back and back in the day when it came out with my parents, and I was like, man, I was blown away. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, this is, it was all over the place. The, the, the thing that stands out from the movie that I remember the most is the part where a man Mordekin falls off the freaking, um, he falls in the snow and he starts rolling down the hill, and they see him rolling in that big ball of snow and everything like that. That, that, that part just always stuck, with, stuck in my head. And also the pig scene, too, towards the end. But, um, check this one out. Um... Finding Teddy Part 2 uh, reminds me of Zelda The Adventures of Link in a way. Um, you, this girl, she's playing a video game. Her Teddy leads her into another world. And um, I don't know about too much story in the game. It, it feels very quiet in the beginning. But once you get to the library, you start going to the different books and different worlds. The game really picks up. Um, I think it's something I'm going to really get into. I'm really excited to play this one. So definitely check this one out if you like what you're seeing here. Uh, I haven't played the first one yet. I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a copy of the first one to play, but I don't think you need really need to play the first one to enjoy this one. So, don't know if they're connected. Maybe they are, but either way, I think this will probably be the better game. 
uh, Gondora uh, for the for the Switch. This game, man, this game is so weird to me, man. I like it, but man, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of like uh, jumping you got to do in this game, like, like a lot of aiming and all that stuff. Like think about if Puzzle Bobble was an adventure game, and um, you get and then you can actually get killed in it. Um, you got to go to certain platforms, hit switches, and get to kind of progress in the game and everything like that. Enemies are, are after you and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. It gets really complicated. At least for me, it did. Um, I, I still like the game. It's like, damn, dude, like, what the hell is going on here? But um, Dondra, if you like what you're seeing here, you might want to check this one out. If you like puzzle action platformer games. Smoke and Sacrifice um, for the Switch. This one... Um, I like I like the way the, the game looks and everything like that. Um, I was playing it and it, going through the story, man. It was always like really sad and everything like that. You know, and you guys know in the beginning when I'm talking about the sacrifice you make in the beginning in this game. I was like, damn, dude. It kind of made me bum bummed out. And I didn't want to play the game anymore. But I, I continued through and it started to pick up and everything like that. But um, just just so you guys know, this game will mess with the feels. So just just letting you guys know. So, um, but yeah, very story driven game. Um, so if you like that kind of type of stuff, you might want to check this one out. I think I made it to the end, guys. The, the last game here, which is a game I thought I wouldn't like, but it's actually pretty fun. And I played it before, but this is like an enhanced version, it feels like it. Um, but, um, this is Death Square, uh, for the Switch. So basically, um, there's a, you're, you play as this program, and the guy's talking, or you're a computer or something like that, and this guy's talking to you during out the game and everything, which is really cool. But you pretty much have to, like, a, it's a puzzle game where you put the, the, the squares on the certain platforms without going, like, without getting caught up in these obstacles, pretty much. So, um, sometimes um, when you move one, another area can move, but be pushing a block somewhere else. So, you have to be careful and move that one out of the way. It's just, like, it's it's, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff, guys. Like I said, if you like what you're seeing here, it's something you might want to pick up. So, um, Death Squared on the Switch by First Print Games. And guys, I think I made it through another pickups video. So, wow, I'm very happy. Very excited. Uh, well, yeah, just very happy it is over because these, doing these things are, are, are long. But anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Radical Reggie, and I will see you guys later.